Sup guys, He King here, bringing you another live reaction to this month's Attack on Titan Chapter 107, aka Visitor. So yeah, it's been a while since I did a video, I think the last ones I did was E3. Been humbly busy dealing with my problem for updates. Uh, it's properly incurable at this point, yeah, sucks to be me. Basically, I've got an overreactive bladder, guys. Meaning I gotta go to the bathroom like every few minutes if I'm very unlucky or every hour, which is the only lucky thing. Which makes me going out and having a social life completely... What's the word for it? Uh, non-existent. So yeah, there's that. It's great. It's great to be me. I hate 2018 so far. It's terrible. Anyway guys, uh, let's try and cheer up a bit, or at least in my case I should try and cheer up by... Reading the latest chapter of Attack on Titan. And Jesus Christ, it's fucking warm. Like, li literally, I've had to close the doors and the windows just so no sound will go out for now. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to be boiling up in a few seconds or minutes, depending on how long this review is going to be. Uh, knowing the usual one is going to be like 30 minutes, isn't it? But, uh, yeah, terrible. Anyway, guys, uh, let's just get on with the chapter then, shall we? I hope you can see me. Uh... A bit weird, let me put the camera a bit down. Uh, I think that's a bit better, perhaps. So yeah, uh, first page. So Aaron is in a cell. We left, we go off where we left off and Hanji is visiting him. What are you doing? Runaway Aaron, that's just how he's captured. He gives her a look. What is he doing? Last time we saw him, he was looking into the mirror. Yeah, he's still looking into the mirror, I believe. Aaron looks very different now. He's got a ponytail, his hair's like all messed up like that. Uh... What are you saying to the mirror? Hey. Yeah, Aaron just looks... Aaron looks very serious. I have to say, the artwork, like, you can tell has drastically improved compared to how it was when the series first started. Like, there's so much more detail and uh, intensity in the art style now. Like, it's just... It's weird when you compare it to the original, like, first few pages of the manga. But uh, yeah, page two. You're talking to yourself in the mirror, aren't you? saying fight fight right you did say fight 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 twice fighting with with if you said it twice then is it no Aaron's just not answering he's just he's just like there looking very intensely like at her like that uh, it's, it's creepy actually man um, if you don't speak I won't know I'm curious because that's what you wouldn't normally say to yourself I've never said it to my own reflection that new hair is amazing. I can see you're trying to make your hair stand out. It, <laughs> it is amazing. It is amazing, actually. What have you come here to do? Aaron is pissed. Like, why is he pissed? What do you mean? I've come to talk. When we first met, we talked about Titans all night long. All my boring talk. You heard me out. I was certain that there was no need for you to sacrifice Historia. Sorry, what? This is, this is page three, right? End of page three. That I was certain that there was no need for you to sacrifice Historia. What? Let's recap. Eren went all the way to Mali, did everything he did to get extra powers, but mostly he, he went through all that crap just so he can get hold of Zeke. So that uh, they wouldn't have to sacrifice Historia. What the hell has happened? It looks like we're gonna get a flashback to that. Um, and I'm gonna be having my Hagen dust while this is going. Seriously, guys, it, it's hot. Okay, I'm allowed to uh, indulge myself. Mmm, that Miller flavor. So good. Technically, I'm, I'm, technically, I've read a theory that maybe it's depression and anxiety and stress that's causing my problem. So, I don't know. Maybe that's a side, considering I eat a lot of haagen -Dazs. I eat a lot, like, pretty much every day. Like, a whole tub of it. That's not healthy at all, is it? But yeah, back back to the chapter. Um, chapter H4, I believe. Two years ago, meeting at the port. So, two years ago, meeting at the port... I think this is when they got Yelana, maybe, or is this something else? So you've got you've got the Paradise Island folks on one side. I can see Hanji, Mikasa, Levi, I believe, and then on the other side, I think is Yalina, you know, Zeke's subordinate, and uh, 
or Okabayaku. Uh, I, I think I'm saying that name so wrong. Again, apologies, guys. Uh, the black dude, basically, and then the other guys they brought with them. So now we're getting a close up of Mikasa, Hanji. Uh, Aaron is there as well. He's got a bit of longer hair. And uh, Levi's. Wow, he's a midget. Levi is a midget compared to Aaron and the others. Like, holy crap. And then we cut to the next panel. You haven't, so it's Yalina again, you haven't greeted us like this since the first time we arrived. It's nice to see you. No, you still can't meet with Eren. Seeing his face is the closest you'll get. Nice to see you. You know, you still can't meet with Eren. Seeing his face is the closest you'll get. I'm fine with that, since today will be a magnificent day. Okay, this is a bit weird. Eren is there. Levi's just gotten in front of him, I think. Yeah, he's gotten in front of Eren. And uh, he's saying that the closest you, you can is, is just this is the closest you get to seeing Aaron or meeting with him. You can't meet with him. Like I don't get what's going on. It's weird. And now we're cutting into a shot of the dock that the Paradise Island have made. And there's a big ship and a little ship coming in. Since the port has been completed and this is the first time you'll meet someone. So the ship's docked. Uh, someone's coming out. Uh, Mikasa up front. Yalina next to her. Levi next to her. Okabayo behind her. It seems all these two groups have come to, together to meet this visitor. Um, I think this is page six now. And it's the Asian lady uh, that was friends with uh, Billy or Willy or whatever his name was, Tyburn. The nation that will become our one and only ally, the nation of Hizaru. Their ambassador has visited, their, their ambassador has visited us. Kiyomi, Kiyomi, Kiyomi Azamu, Azamu Abito, uh, Kiyomi Azum, Azum, Azuma Biato, Kiyomi Azumu Biato. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself. I'm sorry, guys. So she's shaking hands now with, um, I don't know who she's shaking hands with, but I want to get a female character there. I don't think that's Historia, or is that meant to be Historia? She would be decked out in royal guard, wouldn't it? So it's a bit weird. She has unprecedentedly strong ties with foreign countries and so far has high influence over her nation's foreign affairs and is the head of her family. She, so we're getting a close-up of her, yeah, she, and now we're getting a close-up of Mikasa, she, she's kind of, she seems very shocked. If you guys remember, Mikasa is half Asian and her mother was full Asian, so potentially these are actually her people, like this is probably where she came from, like her mom, she probably came from whatever country these guys are from. Oh! Yalina's now just, Yalina's now talking, uh, uh, talk to me, because she's like, she's like, doesn't she look like your mother? It's all as I said, she looks like Mikasa's mom. Not really, I mean, no, not really, but she is related to your bloodline. So you've got a shot of Hanji there, Mikasa, and Levi just giving her that look. M Mikasa's just, just shocked by, by this revelation, like, it's funny, because you've got Levi there, who's pretty much, uh, Related from her, her dad's side in a way, and then you've got this new character, this woman now, like, and she's the ambassador of this big country, who's related to her bloodline. It's interesting. I think I think we're gonna finally get some major development from Mikasa, guys. Um, so we're now in a big room. Uh, all of these officials are meeting, and uh, e so yeah, the she yeah uh, the Kiyomi is talking to Mikasa. She's got bodyguards there. Mikasa's with her, and she's talking to her. She's asking her now, have you seen this symbol? She just, she's gotten this symbol out and it's like, it's that A. That A that we all assume stood for Asian, basically. I don't know why we assumed that, but uh, yeah, Mika's just like, whoa. She's with Eren as well. And like, yeah, they both look kind of surprised. Mika's is most surprised. Yeah, that A symbol, is, it's, a, it's a bunch of swords. It's three swords forming an A and there's a circle around it. This is, show it to her, Mika. So Eren knows, he, he's aware of this. So that's why he's also surprised. He has seen that symbol, but but my mother told me to keep this a secret. But didn't you show it to me when we were kids? Surely that secret was meant for a day like this. So so Mikasa's got a bandage on her arm. She's unwrapping it. She's showing it, and Kiyomi's like surprised as hell by this as well. The seal is some. This seal is something that was inherited from my deceased mother's family. I was even told to entrust this to my own children. She's got the same, Mikasa's got the same symbol on her arm. Guys, oh my god. Oh my god, Remem remember, remember, 
I think because I did read up on some comments before reading this chapter and someone said I think someone said exactly 100 chapters ago when we got Mikasa's flashback we I think it was even it was even included in the anime as well I think but we never saw what it was uh, Mikasa asked her mom what this symbol whatever meant and um, uh, it was uh, I think her mother said it was like part of a family clan or something or something or the ancestors or something like that but we never saw what it was and as the chapters went, we all just assumed it had no importance. Like, it was never going to be brought up. But, oh my god. 100 chapters later, and now we're getting... We're get, we're going back to this. Like, it's crazy. I was even... So, yeah. Yeah, Kiyomi's just like... Yeah, she's surprised. What a healthy and... Ad she's like... she's Yeah, she's sort of like comforting Mikasa. What a healthy and admirable thing you are. So now we're cutting sort of to this painting. More than 100 years ago... Hizaru Nation was an ally was an ally with Eldalian Empire, the ancestor of uh, Azumobayato clan, who was the son of the Shogun in our country, built a friendly, intimate relationship with Fritz's royal family, so we were allowed to stay on this island. After King Okay, we're moving on to the I think page ten. <sighs> After King Fritz moved to this island, Hizaru was seen as a traitorous nation and our reception didn't improve during the ensuring chaos. I'm not certain on what exactly happened, but some of our people were left on the island. Right, one, then 100 or so years later, I've met you who shares the same bloodline as our clan on this island. You are Hizaru's hope, the fruit of our lost citizens. Yeah, that's intense. First 10 pages are, wow. Next part. Wow. Wow, so that's kind of a, that's a big, massive revelation. I didn't think it would ever get that answered, so. Mm. Mm. So she's drinking tea on the table. All the, all the soldiers, different countries, just, you know, like a normal sort of environment. We got an important meeting. If that story is true, Mikasa has a position of significance in Hizaru, correct? If you ask me, isn't she the survivor of the top bloodline of the world? I still don't even know this world very well. Hanji's just... Everyone's just sort of gone crazy with this revelation. Like, you wouldn't think that Mikasa is this important, but now she is. The revelation that she's like the last survivor of, of the people that used to live on the island before it all went to shit. Like, it's, it's crazy. So yeah, Mikasa's like gone from being this badass to actually being sort of this level of royalty in a way in, in a small way i wonder if we're gonna get more revelations man like it's crazy to think that isn't it uh for now we'll use whatever opportunity we have wait what are you going to do if this is a trap we'll just have to ask yaluna that's exactly what the enemy would want so now we got pixels coming in one thing is clear we're nothing but powerless babies in the world beyond the ocean we'll just have to see enough now we cannot make our guests wait more. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, I don't know who this little girl is that's sort of tending to Mika. So she seems very shy and embarrassed. Have you shown the sign to Erin? You've never shown it to anyone before. That. That. Uh, you look happy because I am. Who's that? No, seriously. Who's the. Who's the. Who's the. The short haired, blonde looking kid next to Mika? So is that meant to be Armin? That doesn't look like Armin. Is that Historia, perhaps? I think it's Historia. It's just that she's not wearing her she's not wearing her royalty outfit, so it's it's hard to recognize her. You look happy because I am. So Historia is the one that's happy. We're the people who've had a heavy burden since we were born, right? If Mikasa is like them, they'll find her trustworthy. Yeah, now we got... So if that's Historia talking... I think it is Historia talking. It looks like a boy, though. Like, I don't... And was Historia shorter than Mikasa? I don't, I don't remember. It's weird. So now everyone's at the meeting. We are thankful to see you all in perfect condition. However, for later on, please remember this. The people of Hizaru will always be waiting for you. Yes. So Mikasa's got a place to go to. Like, she doesn't need to stay on Paralyzed Island. She has a place to return to, basically. This, Kiyomi, Kiyomi is now talking, uh, this has been a historic day for both sides, and the only reason we could ever meet is because someone who helped us to do so. 
After we received the information that there is an heir to the Shogun bloodline, we held a secret meeting with the main of the man who gave us the information, Zeke Yeager. We received the information that there is an heir to the Shogun bloodline. So Mikasa is an heir, so technically she's a freaking princess and potentially a, a would-be queen. That's insane! What? <laughs> what? So we're getting a flashback with Kiyomi with Zeke. And she's got some next dubious uh, bodyguards behind her. And they got a case as well. Are they wearing masks like ninjas or something? It's weird. There we made an offer to talk with Miss Mikasa. I will now share the information. So now we're coming back to Zeke. My mother was a survivor of the Fritz family, which means I have royal blood too. I did my duty as a war chief, all without telling this to the Marlenian army. Why would you, the one loyal to Marlene, do that? So big, big uh, panel of Zeke here now because I have been a member of the Italian Restorationists. It has been my father's duty ever since I was born. So why did you portray your parents? I'm, I still say that he, he, he did all of that because he was working with Kruger. Like he manipulated him while he was young or something. We'll find out I guess. But you, yes. I sold out my parents to Marlene. My seven year old self had realized that the Marlene Titan Biology Research Society has come with a nose's length to finding the restoration my father is leading. If it kept going this way, it would be the Paradisian border borderline for my parents. The, restor the, re the restoration, of course, my grandfather, my grandmother and me was guaranteed. So from there, the actions I undertook were of what I had said. My parents were right. However, the, restore, the, re, the restoration of the Great Italian Empire was not something that could have been achieved by this laughable group of idiots. Even after selling up my parents and earning a high status in Mali, some of the translations are a bit off guys, so sorry about that, I still killed Italians and devastated Paradise Island, the very one I had to save. So now we're getting a nice panel here of uh, the car titan with Zeke, Bertold and Rainer there drinking the little coffee. The plan for restoring Dahlia was to, succeed, was to succeed as long as Marlene continues with the recovering the founding Titan plan. This was because Marlene did not know I had royal blood. Yeah, completely forked them. I think we're on page 17 now. Marlene, or no one, or no one for that matter, knows what happens when a title with royal blood, when a title with royal blood and the founding Titan come together. Not your nation either, at least not for now. That's an interesting point. What would happen if, if someone with the founding Wait, we did find out though. You go nuts. You go crazy. Ah, oh, shit. And now I gotta go all the way at the bottom again. This is what happens when you click next by accident. Okay. Okay, back. As you had thought, we want in on this. However, if the revival of the Italian Empire will threaten the world, then we cannot agree. Hmm, so Kiyomi saying they cannot agree with this? If, what, why? Depending on the situation, we'll confess this folly to Marlene. This is very regret regrettable, but the result will be the same, even if we all die right here. Of course, Miss Kiyomi. If this doesn't affect not only... This, if this doesn't affect not only the Azumobiotos but Hizaru, then it will not be it will not be done. Hmm. Please have a look at this. So he's going for his bag and he's taking something out for the, that, huh? I had thought the this was Marlene's confidential material better, but you knew about it, about this, about it. This, this three-dimensional maneuvering gear is Paradise's invention. This is a weapon which is used to kill Titans. This is not something Marlene has been keeping on the check. I took it to check if it was a support item or not. I will give you this. However, to move the mechanisms, you need a special min mineral. You, you, they call it Ice Burst Stone. Okay, so I think this is the gear that he basically stole from Mika back in, uh, back in the Clash of the Titans arc when Zeke made his first appearance as the Beast Titan. And now we're finding out that they need a mineral called an Ice Burst Stone to make it work. I think that's what makes the gas, doesn't it, properly? This is, this is an unknown underground resource that is only exclusive to Paradise, but the existence of it has been rumoured for a while. 
the founding titan, the first king, dug a giant hole in paradise and put in flaming stones or shiny stones in a reserve. It's a little, but the traces of this iceberg stone will remain in this container. The people of paradise have no reason to value this underground reserve. This information will connect Hizaru and Paradise Island. It's interesting that he's bringing up a secret underground area where this stuff is kept. Because I've had this crazy, crazy ass theory for a while now that there's more to this than meets the eye. I've been saying, I've had this theory for a while now that maybe, maybe whatever Zeke is planning is bullshit. And that he's going to do something else. And my theory has been that maybe he's going to go down into the center of Paradise Island. Which is, and it, he's going to find something that's located only underground. And potentially... It might involve a giant ass sleeping titan. That's that. That's just my crazy theory. I don't know why. And it's gonna yeah, the final battle, or whatever, is gonna consist of this giant thing just bursting out of the ground, out of paradise, and just towering all over Paradise Island. Like that's just like all the walls, basically. That's my that's my crazy theory. But uh, the fact that he's brought up this this underground reserve that's only located on Paradise is a bit like unexpected. And at the same time, it's like okay. Where's this going to lead to? It, it can't just be an ice stone or mineral that we're going to try and get from there. Like, there has to be more to it than that. So we're back to the meeting then. The flashback's over and we're back on the meeting. That man suggested that if I helped him come here, then the submissive nation will turn into a great country with prospering, with, pro with prospering industries. We have not even researched those reserves, but if that is the truth, resources with values that are just like gold to sleep inside this moder modern modernization era the koga merits of hizaru will profit from this so kiyomi is just sort of like ah, i'm talking and she's got a bit of something slipping from my mouth i don't know if that's spit or from my tea miss kiyomi please use this whoops i made a scene is she touching the spit like it's just dripping out what is that uh mikasa and erin are just like yeah, All right. What's going on? Did uh, so now we're cutting to Hanji, Eren, and Mikasa, and Mikasa's thinking, "Did this awkward lady only just news me?" And Hanji's like, "Yalina did say that the Azabobiotis smell money quite well, and so the bargaining would be quite easy." And then now to Pixis, of course they wouldn't come to this island and take some rigs if they didn't benefit. And now Historia. So, what is the plan that Zeke Yeager has been talking about? She's wiped it away. As you know, Zeke Yeager claims that he has a secret up his sleeve. He says that the Hizaru nation is critical to the secret to saving the Idalians and the rest of the world. That's one of the three courses of action to be able to protect this island by flattening the earth. What? That's one of the three courses of action to be able to protect this island by flattening the earth. The first choice is to experiment and show the rest of the world the destructive power of even a function of this rambling. The second is the involvement of Hizaru. The aim is to empower this nation's military to the point where it is caught up with the rest of the world. In this, in this course, the flattering of the Earth's Earth is not necessary. It is not difficult to employ the latest weaponry. Okay, I'm going to stop here, guys. We're basically like uh, 24 minutes into this, man. Like, this is long. Like, a lot of talking and not enough action. It is not difficult to employ the latest weaponry, but to have a modernized military power requires building a strong foundation of national power. So they just want the resources, basically. They're like, we will join with you if you give us those resources. This island is approximately 100 years behind the rest of the world. Yeah, that's that's pretty much a given. Like, they're backwards as shit. It will not take 100 years to bridge that gap. But it will, it will take at least 50 years to do so. So 50 years to get ahead. In other words, in order to protect this island, you will still need the option of flattering the earth. The third option is the continued possession of the founding titan. And a titan of royal blood. For Zeke, the successor of the beast titan, for Zeke, the, the successor of the beast titan will need to be one possessing royal blood. Historia looks a bit frightened after hearing this. And before the 13 years are up for the one with royal blood, you will need to raise more to take their place. Okay. Things have just gotten really fucked up now. 
So they're basically saying that the the you know someone needs to inherit the Beast Titan, and that it needs to be someone with royal blood. But at the same time, after the 13 years are up, they will need to give it to someone else with royal blood. They will need to raise more to take their place. This just got really fucked up, like, because everyone's just looking at Historia now, and yeah, Mikasa, Eren are just shocked. Uh, Hanji, like, just looks, yeah. Hanji's just thinking now, will 50 years be enough? Even if other weapons are developed, flattening the earth is a powerful weapon to have. If we can't give that up, the inheritors will continue to be exposed to the risk of assassination and the inheritance of the Titans will carry on for generations and generations. Just like the Rice family from parent to child, how many times, how many times, yeah. It'll be a cycle that just repeats itself really. In order for us to survive, is it okay for us to pass the burden of this unsolvable problem to our... To our what? To our queen? Surely not. There's no way this could be forgiven. However, I understand. Historia, shit. Shit. I will accept inheritance of the Beast Titan as long as it ensures our survival. So, Historia is going to become the next Beast Titan. But that also means that she has to have heirs. This is this is exactly why Dina was... Uh, was chained into a time why Kruger didn't bother saving her, like, or they didn't tell her that she wa she had royal blood because they would have, they would have, they would have taken her and they would have raped her constantly and constantly just so she can birth ro children royal blood. There's a reason Zeke didn't say anything either because they would have knew they would have probably done the same thing with him, like. And now his story is like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Like, she's agreeing to this. And er Aaron's not. He's his story. Aaron's pissed. He's getting up now and he's like, if our survival depends on being forced to breed like livestock and dying in the process even after having been violated of the destruction of the walls then I can't accept Zeke Yeager's plan so this is Ze this is Ye this is Zeke's plan like but then Aaron and him must have made a different plan which is I'll, I'll come to the island then or something it is dangerous for us to leave our fate to ensuring that the rumbling stays available to us wouldn't the, best, wouldn't the best plan be to consider all available options to us in the time that we have left? Yes, now is not the time to rush to conclusion conclusion or decisions. We will continue to act as Medarians with Zeke Yeager. Madaris with Zeke Yeager. Hanji, Mikasa looking at Eren. Eren just, yeah, he looks really serious. And now we're cutting back to present time. With Eren in the cell. We still haven't found another option, so on Hundred. Yeah, the end of Zeke's tenor is fast approaching, and Marlene will attack Paradise earlier than we had planned. I thought we were feeling the same level of anxiety as you. But I don't understand why you have exposed this island to danger by acting alone. Do you no longer care what happens to Historia? I ate the Warhammer Titan. So, okay, that's confirmation for everyone. Everyone's been going crazy, going, oh, did he get the power of the Eater? It's like, yeah, he, he obviously ate her. So, yeah, there's a confirmation of Eren saying that. What? This Titan's ability is to freely create things from the ground through its hardening ability. It was a tiring opponent. So there's no use in keeping me confined deep underground. I can get out of here whenever I want. Oh, shit. Oh, shit, that's true. Like, he, he can control the minerals and shit now, like... Of course, there's no way you'd be able to kill me since I possess the Founding Titan. No matter how much you threaten to, you can't kill Zeke either. He's getting really up close to Hanji now in the cell. So, Hanji, what can you do? And he's just grabbed her through the through the cage. Ugh, tell me, Hanji. Tell me, is there another way? He's pissed. Like, Eren is pissed. And he's got the markings on his face. The markings. Let me go back. Let me see. He's transforming. Holy shit, he's using he's using abilities. Like he's got the tight in transformation happening on his eyes. She swiped his hand away. Aaron, you pervert. Why is he a pervert? Are you still going through a rebellious phase, you idiot? Young lady. Who was he referring to? Was that Aaron saying young lady to her? Or? So Mikas has just left the, the basement uh, cell. Erwin, this is the only mistake you made. Why did you make a person like me the commander? Why indeed. She certainly doesn't want that position. Now we're cutting to Mikasa, I think. And um, it's a graveyard. 
Ten bucks. Ten bucks says it's Sansa's grave. God, we we just have to keep getting reminded of Sansa's death. Like, like just 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 drop it now already. Do you know what I mean like? Hey you, you're you're a Marley, Marlene, right? Why have you come here to this cemetery for Adalians who have been killed by your people? Please wait. So some 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 guy just hit one of the Marlenes, and uh, Connie and Sean are trying to back this dude off. We'll take care of this guy. N N Nicolau, are you alright? Oh, it's that dude that uh that made that food, that seafood, and Sa Sa Sasha loved it. Nicolau, you're right. Damn it, why? How did you get here? Is Sasha really dead? Oh. Huh? Why? What? What did you guys do? She was shot by a girl who made it onto the blip. How ridiculous. She wasn't a regular kid. She'd been trained. Maybe she was a warrior c candidate. I was careless. Who's that? I think that's... F is that Sean? Is that Sean or Flock? I was careless. I'm so sorry. Why are you apologizing to me? All I did was prep... The pre prep all the meals. Prepare the meals. Connie's putting her hand on his shoulder. Thank you for feeding her. Lots of delicious food. Nicolo. How are you doing, Connie? Sasha and I were practically like twins. That breaks my heart, man. It feels like half of me has disappeared. And behind them, some other guy just shows up. Uh, Mikasa and John are giving him a look. You are... So there's a woman there, and there's a, there's a, there's a girl, a man, a boy there. And there's a dude with a hat. It seems like my door is indebted to you. Oh. I think this is Sansa's father. Yeah. I don't know who the other two... I think that the other one is our mother, and the other one is probably a sister or brother. Unless it's the little girl that uh, Sasha saved. Excuse me, I'm just a Marlian prisoner of war, but I was put to work as a cook. Your daughter ate my meals so well, more than anyone, so if you don't mind, please let me cook for you sometime. It's free, right? Ah, uh, yes. I'm not gonna cry, uh, I'm trying to avoid crying because I, I did want to see this. I hoped, I hoped we would see her dad visit her at the grave and maybe see this dude again like just to kind of show that yes the, the, in the end I mean it's very undeveloped because it just sort of came out last chapter in it but at least you know that a few years passed a few months maybe maybe weeks and that uh, you know the, the, the Marle there were Marlenes who are good who are genuinely good who did become friends with these people so at least that's sort of like a new character you have there that might join the final fight or not and you know, <laughs> Sasha's dad looks very different. He looks a lot more slimmer as well. A shaking hand, sad man. So now we're cutting to a rooftop. I think we're back in the central. And now we've got a panel of, uh, I think, Titan Serum. We've got a, a box of Titan Serum. These are all of the Titan Serums that we stole from Marlene. So this is Yalina with Okabayaku and all the other Marlene soldiers. But I will reward, but I will be... I, but it will be hard to re re replicate them, since we couldn't steal away the reports or knowledge of the Titan scientists. No. So now we're cutting to Pixis. No, this is enough. I'm not sure how we can thank you. We are indebted to you, and you have guided us with such hope. I thought we had demonstrated our friendliness towards you these past three years. It's, it's, a, sh it's a shame. It's a shame. These guns we brought with us are guns, are guns that bring freedom to Idalians. So yeah, these guys uh, have come in with the serums, and uh, they're surrounded by a bunch of soldiers aiming their own guns that they've given to them at them. Apologies for our shortcomings, but could you turn a blind eye to our weaknesses for now? There's no way we can't keep Zeke imprisoned. There's no way we can't keep Zeke imprisoned. It's fine, Commander Pixis, but there will come a day when we dine around the same table. The ones who await that day are us. So now we're cutting to Zeke. So what are they saying? What 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 do they mean? Uh, there's no way we can we can't keep Zeke in prison. So what does that mean? They don't want to keep him in prison. They want to kill him or something. So that we're cutting to Zeke and he's in a I don't know where he is. This is he's in a cart and they're my, my, and they're taking him to the forest, the forest of giant ass trees. My hotel. This is my hotel. And Levi's following my horse. Do you have any complaints? There's no place more suitable for you than this. This is a forest of giant trees of up to 80 millimeters. There's no easy way to get out on your own, and no decent rocks around either. 
you won't be satisfied by throwing anything around here. You could get around here using 3D, 3D at menu gear, but even that you can only find here in the whole world. Hey, Captain Levi, I want to show this majestic scene of nature to Gabby and Falcon. What do you think? I see the kids are on your mind. Whether or not those kids get to see this majestic scene of nature depends on your actions. And now we're cutting to Gabby and Falcon. So now we're cutting to Gabby. I think we're on, yeah, page 40 now. We're nearing the end. And now uh, my ice cream is melting. Gabby, hey, what is it? Hey, pull yourself together. So they're in they're in a cell and the uh, Fal Falcon's like I think Gabby's having a spaz attack. And there's a soldier though that's I think the guard. What are you guys doing? She she suddenly started having pain. Hey, look here, young miss, are you okay? Nope, she's faking it, and she just smacked the guard in the face with a. Uh, I think she's wrapped a brick in her cover and she just swung it at his at his face. He's fallen to the ground. Gabby's jumping on him and she just smashed his head in. Gabby, no more of this. Hurry, hide him under the bed. Damn it, that was brutal. Oh, you think? We escape from here and then what? If we, so they... What the fuck? How did they get out from... Was this some unguarded area they just decided to leave one guard to look after? Like, how did the hell did they get out of the building? They're in the fucking field now. Like, what the hell? We escape from here and then what? If we stay, aren't we gonna get ripped apart? These people cared about you. Why do you believe those devils? I can't even trust Zeke anymore. Or even anyone else. Someone please punch, kill Gabby. Please. Like, I, I hate her so much. Like... I hate her. And now we're cutting to Reyna! We're coming to Rainer and he's waking up and he's in a bed and he's getting up and and there's Porkums and Peckums. Peckums alive. Porkums alive. It looks like they're all in a, in a bed or a building. Might be a hospital or a recovery room. Did you have a bad dream again? It would be better if this was all a dream. Yeah, I think they're in the hospital. Peckums there. There's there's Porkums giving him Galliard. Basically, he's offering Rainer a drink. I heard the voices of Gabby and Falcom. Where are the two of them? How the hell did you hear their voices? So now we're gonna get some sort of psychic bullshit link. And now we're cutting to another panel. There's someone sitting in a chair outside on a, looking at a field. Uh, I think that's the sunset or the sun sunrise. Looks like a farm. So yeah, it's a farmhouse. Uh, some dudes coming out. Come inside, Historia. It's Historia. She looks uh wow. Um, her hair's gone longer, and she looks dead inside. Last page, and uh wow. Uh, you have to be more careful of your body. I don't know who this guy is, but uh, Historia is pregnant. Historia is. Pregnant. There goes all the Erin and Historia or Historian Reyna or Ymir Shippings, whatever. It's gone. Historia's pregnant. The tragedy that has always been undertaken since birth is starting to count its seconds towards a chain reaction. That was the last chapter, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. So here's the question then, guys. She agreed to it. She did agree. But was it, in the end, was it forced? Was it insemination? If not, does she have a lover? I mean, you're, I'm looking at her face and she doesn't look happy at all. She looks dead. She looks dead inside. I'm, I'm assuming this is how her mom felt when, when she gave birth to Historia. So it's, it's kind of ironic that now she's having a kid that she doesn't really want. With probably a man that she doesn't love. That's fucked up. No, no wonder Aaron is pissed, like. No one, yeah, he must have, surely he must have found out what, what, what happened and that's why he was angry, like, with Hanji and that. The fact that they let this happen, like, but that, was, that also it gives you an example of, of how, many, how long he was in Marlene, like, if he, if he went to get Zeke only to come back and this has happened, like, 
He obviously was not aware of this. That's fucked up. Um, wow. And that is the end of the chapter. Wow. Um, decent chapter. Uh, we finally got our Mikasa thing answered after all that long time. We got a bit small developments. We got a little moment of Sansa, Reina, and Historia finally returned in a proper way, in a sad, tragic, fucked up way. So. That was very unexpected. Like, that Isayama, man, just throwing us for a loophole every single bloody time. But yeah, guys, uh, season three of the anime is going to be starting in the next few weeks. I believe the premiere is actually this week, but we won't see it until another two or three weeks. And then there's the question of whether we're going to get 24 episodes or not. And if we are, then that means we're going to get a lot of the answers answered from the base spin. And then next year or 2020 might be the year that we're going to get the Marlene arc adapted. But, um,. The big question I think we're all wondering is when is this series going to end? I mean, chapter 107 is the start of volume 27, I believe. And, uh, uh, you know, my theory basically is that th th this series is going to come to an end with volume 32. So we're, we're still sort of in the Marlene arc, but we're just sort of getting a, a conclusion to it, I think. And then I think after these next three chapters are done, we're going to... We're probably going to get another chapter that's going to lead up to the final arc, maybe, or not. But that's, that's just my theories. But this chapter, man, was... Uh... Again, it was too much talking, but interesting uh, talking, basically. Like, that sort of sets things up. Uh, uh, we, we, we basically got allies now. But we also potentially have people who are backstabbers. With Yarlene and the others, maybe not. Uh, Zeke, we don't know what he's really planning. We don't know what his overall goal is. And then we have Kiyomi, who honestly, I, I don't think we can trust her. Like, the, the, she seems like the kind of person, like, they even said that they care about money. But what if there's more to it than that? So, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm just curious if we're going to get, like, a final villain or something or not. I don't think Zeke is going to be, is, is, is going to be, like, a final villain. Someone else is going to be that, I think. But, uh, and Eren's just going nuts. Like, he's going crazy. Like, he did not want this. He did all of this crap. So, they wouldn't do this with Historia, but they did it regardless. So, it's all gone to shit, basically. Um, yeah, yeah, shit. Anyway, guys, that's my uh, reaction to chapter 107 of Attack on Titan. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, guys, like and subscribe, whatever, and I shall see you when I shall see you. Uh, take care and bye. And Christ, it's too hot. Like, I'm dying here, like... Take care, guys. Peace out.